Steve, happy Monday. Happy Monday to you. What's new, man? I know like you're so busy with uh, with EXO stuff and then with a baby coming, but have you had time to like get out no. anything in the works, anything no. you're excited about? Yeah, that's kind of what uh, I thought. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I think my, my wife is um, uh, any husband that's gone through having a child, like she has a ton, a ton of Braxton Hicks contractions so much so they have to put her on medicine and stuff. So with our first one, we were expecting uh, our daughter to come early and she didn't, she didn't, but same situation on this one. So we're, uh, we got four or five weeks to go and I'm not, uh, definitely not planning on being out, although it's killing me. I would love to throw a pack on and grab a gun or something and go bear hunt. So, yeah, but, uh, yeah, I think my first outing is probably going to be the death hike, man. As sad Crazy. as that sounds like, cause that'll be a month after, uh, the boys, uh, comes into this world. So yeah, yeah we'll see. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully everything goes smooth, but then, yeah. And then work is obviously just, uh, Getting ready for these 2019 designs, man. It's um, just f- polishing up all the last little details, and it's kind of like uh, it's a lot of work. Yeah, it's, it's keeping me busy. That's for sure. So, for sure. Yeah. So we're essentially at about two months out to the day from the death hike, and we haven't mentioned that. So just in brief, what's mm-hmm. what's the plan for the death hike this year? Yeah, uh, basically, I wanted to. Um, the The very first death hike we did, we did uh, basically started hiking at seven o'clock at night. And then the goal was to go as far as we possibly could, sleep for a few hours, and then finish the hike. Um, and that was hard. Uh, <laughs> like the mental aspect of that of 3 a.m. hiking, you know, uh, lack of sleep. And then I think we slept for I don't know how many hours, four or five hours, something like that, getting up and, and going at it again. Um, that was hard. Uh, you know, like I said physically that was one of the easier hikes because it was the shortest one we did. It was the first one we did. We didn't know what we were capable of. Um, and I want to kind of replicate that, but, but it, you know, amplify it a little bit. So we're actually going to go in early June. Uh, we're going to start hiking at noon, and we're going to shoot for 50 miles uh, consecutively nonstop. So. I like this hesitancy in your voice, like, we're going <laughs> to shoot for 50. <laughs> um, and, yeah, see, see if we can do 50 miles nonstop. We've never done – you know, day one last year we did 37, um, and I, I talked to a handful of guys who did it. And like, do you think at the end of day one you had another 13 miles in you? And everyone was just kind of like, ugh. Yeah. You know, uh, everyone was pretty well wiped out. I was glad to be at camp at that point. I'll put it yeah. that way. And then uh, for some reason, well, I kind of threw out some possible dates for, you know, uh, all the guys to vote on. And, and uh, June 7th was one of the ones that was open, and, and everyone jumped at it, which I was kind of excited about because – that definitely means, you know, depending on how warm the spring is, we're going to hit some snow fields and um, it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking about snowshoes being required and, and uh, um, little uh, yak tracks type little cleats for the bottom of your boots. If you're walking on just icy stuff, you know, if it's, I'm, I'm sure, it, you know, at that elevation and late at night, early in the morning, it's going to be all just frozen solid. So it yeah. could be, uh, could be pretty interesting, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. The the mental aspect of that, of, of not going to sleep, and, and you can't pack a sleeping bag or sleeping pad, so um, you really have no choice. You may, might be able to lay down on the side of a trail and take a quick nap or something, but uh, you're going to wake up probably shivering your butt and be forced to get, get mm-hmm. going. Hiking again, so. It's going to be really interesting to see that early morning, late night, because we – you know, we did the last year, we did the, um, the very kind of strict protocol of like hike rest for certain amounts of time, but that rest could easily turn into too much rest or just passing out. And it'll be interesting to see if holding a schedule and having call it a 30 to 40 minute break works in the night, or if that's too long, like you almost need to get moving sooner to force yourself to stay awake. It's yeah, there's going to be a lot to play there. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't thought too much into it. Cause I do think there's the possibility to maintain that schedule and just like set your watch or your phone to freaking beep at you after 15 minutes, you know, like if you just keep getting these little 15 minute cat naps, cat so that's kind of yeah. enough to keep you going. It'd be interesting. Yeah. And, and there are a lot, a lot of different ways people could try it, you know? So I, I think one strategy would just be, um, maybe at like eight or nine lay down and crash for an hour before it gets too cold, before it gets too late. And then, see if that gives you enough to get all the way out uh so hiking through the night yeah, yeah that's interesting too 
Huh. Yeah. It'll, be, it'll be fun. Yeah, it'll be cool. I wonder how, because we have to break up in groups. Um, I wonder what the experience will be with different groups trying different things. So it'll be fun to kind of, as, as it always is, to finish the death hike and get everybody back together. Um, yeah. And then kind of chat about what worked, what didn't work, and all that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Cool. Um, just because the death mic hike is mentioned here, it's worth addressing. I mean, each year we've had people ask us, you know, can they go on the death hike essentially? And especially for this one with uh, the logistics and with group restrictions and sizes in the wilderness. I mean, essentially it's pretty much full, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're pretty much full. Unfortunately, yeah. I wish I could, you know, have let 200 people come, but it's just not not a practical thing or something that we could pull off. So, yeah. so that's it. I mean, one thing is just because this hike's full listeners don't let that keep you from putting on something wherever you're at. So grab some buddies and find a route close to you. Find some guys who are willing to try it and yeah, do your own death hike and let us know how it goes. So that'd be cool. Um, one thing timely just to mention, you know, this month um, here in April is the giveaway with Easton. Um, so just to remind you guys, just head to exomountaingear.com forward slash podcast. You can win a dozen Easton arrows this month through the podcast. And thanks to Easton for doing that. It's funny, Steve, for the past, oh gosh, three years, I think I've just shot like a super consistent arrow setup and just didn't even think about it. And this year I kind of got the itch to play a lot more. Um, <laughs> so this year I'm kind of getting back to trying some different weights and FOC setups and fletching. And I just, I don't know. I used to do that stuff a ton and kind of got burnt out and it was just like, Hey, this works. I'm going to roll with it. Um, but it's, it's, I'm looking forward to the spring shooting and experimenting a lot more. Um, mm. Kind of going with a heavier setup to just to both for, I mean, not only for penetration reasons, but really just, I'm kind of back to chasing a quiet bow a little bit. And I want to do some side by side stuff and see truly what type of difference arrow weight makes there. And um, yeah, just playing with downrange FOC. So getting back into arrows, man, it's fun. If right. a guy doesn't, um, you know, because there's guys all over the map with archery setups, whether he has like a ton of tools, does a ton of work himself. I would say even if you're not the guy who wants to fully tinker with your bow and a bow press, et cetera, tinkering with arrows is actually super accessible and really easy to do. Um, so I would just throw that out there. If you're looking to get more into understanding your bow setup and dynamics of flight and things like that, that I think actually starting with building your arrows yourself and playing with variables there is probably the easiest way to do it. What does that make sense, Steve? No, oh, yeah, absolutely. And, that, and there's, um, like you said, I, I mean, I think I'm right now still in that boat of, I know it works for me. I'm going to stick with it. Um, not quite ready back to that tinker stage, but there's definitely a lot of, um, accuracy and performance that can be gained or lost by playing with the arrow. Right. Um, and it's, it's fun to dive into that and understand it and, um, I'm still not super like on the high FOC train. I've shot anywhere from like nine to 14% and I haven't not, not had a pass through in a, like a decade. Um, like every animal I shoot at has a pass through. I think a lot of that is, is arrow weight and, and broadhead design. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. It'll, it'll be fun to hear your thoughts and what you kind of come up with if, with the, I, there's definitely a lot on the, uh, heavier air or quiet in your bow. I think that makes a pretty substantial impact. And, but how much does that translate into, um, you know, downrange the animal jump in the string right. or not? That's like, how do you even measure that? So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think part of the reason I was looking at tinkering was cause I was, man, I have arrows from eight years ago, right? Like I just have so many different setups sitting around and I just got to thinking it'll be cool to do some side by side stuff. Um, not only with stuff I've currently building, but just then with different arrow weights, different FOCs, just different things that are sitting around. Shoot, I got at this point different diameters and all kinds of variables. And I'm not going to go full crazy scientific, but for sure I'll be tinkering and we can uh, do some follow up and share some results there. Yeah, I like it. Um, yeah, so on this Monday Minute as well, we're going to conclude with uh, this segment with um, our buddy Tyler from Muley Freak. So Muley Freak and Top Priority, 
uh, both. They kind of, they're both doing a series right now that's really timely for this and specifically with spring bear season. And they're both releasing some films um, in a series um, currently. They both um, have started their series, so you can go check up on each of them. And this is a conversation we wanted to air last week with Tyler and uh, essentially life got in the way. We didn't get it up, but so this is pre-recorded uh, with Tyler about the series that Muley Freak's doing, and you'll hear that Top Priority is doing as well. So it's on bear hunting, and the really cool thing about this is it's much more than just uh, like, hey, here's a bear hunt on film. They're actually going deeper into showing um, all that goes into bear hunting with different methods, meaning spot and stalk with baiting. They're doing some interviews um, with some biologists. And so it's a pretty comprehensive look at bear hunting, both from a high level and then getting specifics into different species, different areas, different hunting tactics. Um, so we talk with Tyler a little bit about that in this segment. You can hear about it. So go check out Muley Freak and Top Priority. Um, and we'll roll into this segment here with Tyler. Tyler, thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm personally excited to to see this project come together and to tune in myself. And we just want to take some time to share it with the listeners as well because it's timely. You guys just uh, last week launched the first episode, and it's the first of many to come. So just go ahead and like first give us the thirty thousand foot view on what this project is, why you guys put it together. Yeah, so uh, probably three or so years ago, Eric kind of had this idea to do some sort of a bear hunting series. And he really wanted to make it more of a, an educational uh, video series. And so it was kind of cool how it all came together. Um, he started calling around, asking a few people to, to join in and, and see if they wanted to, to help us out because, you know, we've been bear hunting for a while, but obviously not experts in bear hunting so so trying to you know get some more knowledge to to bring to the series and um just some different perspectives as well so uh top priority uh, they ended up being a, a group that that we could tell is super passionate about bear hunting and uh and so we we asked them to join in with us and and they're great dudes so so it was, it was fun getting to work with them, and and uh, they brought a lot to the table. But uh, so it, we decided that the series was gonna just basically show all the different types of bear hunting. Um, you know, whether it's spot and stock, bait, um, hunting with hounds, and then there's a lot that goes goes into just the management of bears as well. So we're gonna have a few a few different episodes that will highlight. Um, some other, uh, like a, like a bear biologist actually. So that's going to be a, a cool little segment as well. What, what's some but, things that you learned from, uh, the biologist that like maybe surprised you? Cause I don't, I mean, I don't definitely fully do not understand bear behavior and, and everything they're doing out there. Right. So, uh, we actually haven't filmed that yet. Oh, okay. So that's going to be coming up this year. Oh, um, gotcha. we're going to film okay. that episode. So that's on, that's on the docket. And, uh, I think, I believe Aaron is going to be heading out with him and, and, uh, yeah, I just following him along. They're going to be doing some bear denning, which I don't even know the extent of all that, but <laughs> sounds kind of cool though. <laughs> yeah. 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 Should From cool what I've see. heard, it's pretty exciting and, and some yeah, up close and personal with some bears. So, um, yeah, it'll be cool. Definitely. Oh. So you guys, you've released one episode, so this is an ongoing series as of now, and it's content from previous hunts and previous experiences, and then it sounds like real time this spring, this season, as this project continues to go over the coming weeks, they'll be kind of, I don't want to call it live, right, but like very current um, episodes releasing. Yeah, so uh, we did we did film a, a bunch. We have probably 10 to 12, maybe a a couple more episodes, you know, it all comes together, uh, that are in the docket right now. And so we released the first one. We're going to try to do one to two episodes, uh, a week. and so we'll do that. And obviously we're coming up on bear season now. And so we'll be 
continuing to film. I don't know if we're going to call it Bear Wars 2 or whatever it's going to be. Um, but yeah, so we're going to, we're going to be filming this year. It's going to be, um, you know, the same, same type of hunts. We're going to add a few more extra things as well. Just like, just like that bear denning episode and, and some other stuff. But, uh, yeah, <clears throat> we're, we're really excited, uh, to, to put this all together. It's been, it's been a really fun, uh, project and it, uh, it really started off on, on a good foot too because we went out on the first hunt and ended up killing a bear uh first day and had a couple really cool encounters that that first day and then you know we we're able to take a few more so uh eric actually he went to alaska did a brown bear hunt so that'll be that'll be on there for sure um yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna keep adding to it and and see what else we can come up with. But yeah. uh, I think uh, it's important to uh, highlight the fact that so we started out as bear wars and that was kind of we were all gonna try and share each of our perspectives on this project on so on the Muley Freak channel and the Top Priority channel. Uh, what it's gonna end up being is. Well, top priority, they changed the name of their perspective of the project. Um, and so they called it the priority season, I believe. And uh, so you'll see their episodes on their ch on the top priority channel. And then when we release our episode, it'll be on our Muley Freak channel, and it's going to be the... Uh, the bear war series uh there's this ingrained i believe so top priority series ingrained i think it's interesting with this project one of the things that i think could be really helpful with it you mentioned like the educational perspective and you know that goes beyond just like education on how to hunt bears but really why bear hunting is important um you know because i think there's a lot of misconceptions about bear hunting and even obviously as you get into looking at or discussing hunts that use bait or hounds or things like that. Um, it'll be, I think it could be really helpful to kind of show everything that actually goes into that. Because I know that when I was, you know, first heard of like bear baiting years and years ago, I had something in my head that I realized if you're doing that on your own and actually running bait sites and putting all the work in, man, it's a, it's a much more difficult hunt than, I first assumed it would have been. So I think it'll be interesting to see that perspective. Oh, a hundred percent. And that, and that's kind of the idea behind it is for some reason it, there's more, uh, conflict. I, I think around surrounding bear hunting than any other animal, uh, whether it's between hunters and, and like you said, whether, you know, they're hating on each other for baiting, you know, trying to take the easy route, supposedly the easy route right like like you just said it's super super time consuming and a lot of work goes into it and uh the top priority guys they actually were the ones that we, i helped a little bit but they for the most part set up and ran our baits and uh they did a really good job of capturing all the work that goes into that so um that'll be that'll be good for people to see you know just exactly how much goes into into baiting bears and um, how it's not as easy as it looks, but we, uh, yeah. So I think hunters kind of have, like I said, have that, um, the, their, their own opinions on, on how you should hunt bears, but also just whenever we put up any videos or posts about bear hunting, for some reason we get more, uh, more anti hunters, I guess, commenting and, and hating on our, on our content. And, uh, so it'll be, hopefully we're trying to make it so that those type of people can maybe have a different outlook and try to gain some type, some type of understanding of, of why we're actually hunting the bears in there. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I wonder, I was always curious about that. Cause I think it, I think it really just comes down to like, uh, characters like Winnie the Pooh and having teddy bears and things like that. The bears have always been portrayed as cuddly and soft and, and nice, mm -hmm. you know, um, into, in the mainstream kind of world. And I think people mm -hmm. just, uh, have that ingrained in their head. 
Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that you know when we talk to this bear biologist that he uh, he's able to shed a lot of light on on just exactly like how much damage a bear can do. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, you think about some of <clears throat> some of our units here in Idaho and how you know one of our best, most premier deer units um, with a great thriving population has gone downhill ever since uh we uh put a controlled hunt for bears in that same unit and that population of bears is just out of control right now and it's no surprise that the deer population has declined uh, pretty rapidly over the last handful of years awesome well tyler we will uh we'll include the links basically you know, check out the show notes or the description for this episode. And then, so we'll have links to both the Muley Freak channel as well as the Top Priority channel. Um, that'll get you into the start of this series. And I guess if uh, guys can just hit that subscribe button when they're there on those channels, you guys are going to have episodes coming out for quite a few weeks to come, right? Yeah, yep, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, looking for probably throughout the, the entire bear season, we'll be re- releasing the episodes. So stay tuned and, yeah, we'll be... Letting everybody know, you know, on Instagram and all that stuff as well. So, 